on average we recover less than 50% of the fertiliser nitrogen we apply in the year of fertiliser application. And I guess the thing we're trying to tie down is where does the rest of it go? There's a big gap in our understanding of the fate of soil nitrogen. What are the various pathways by which it can disappear? Not a mystery at all. Volatilisation, denitrification, leaching. But how much do we lose by each pathway in real paddock scenarios? Massive gaps in the data, so the modelling of nitrogen loss is very uncertain. That's about to change. We're trying to build a huge database that the models can use as a reference to check their ability to get it right uh, and then give people confidence that, that the predictions that the models are going to make for their management systems uh, are going to be reliable. It's a national GRDC investment that draws together people and resources from each mainland state ag department, four universities and CSIRO. Professor Mike Bell from the University of Queensland is leading the project. By doing this national approach, we're covering the major crop soils around the country. We're trying to pick the main crop rotations, crop sequences that people are using. And we're trying to focus our research on different soil types, different climatic zones. And in the case of summer versus winter cropping here in the north, we're focusing on summer crop other guys are focusing on winter crop. Okay, but how? It'd be a big help if you could just apply N fertiliser on a trial plot and watch where it goes. Problem is, not all soil nitrogen comes from fertiliser, so how do you tell which is which once it's in the paddock? Enter N15, a stable nitrogen isotope. Nitrogen with a signature and it's been applied to these plots in Gatton. The way we've set these field trials up, we have different nitrogen, rates of fertiliser nitrogen applied as normal conventional urea, and we also have rates of nitrogen applied with urea that's been enriched with the natural isotope of 15N. Nitrogen makes our grass crops go around. There's no other way of looking at it. Dr David Lester from Queensland's Ag Department is heading up the summer crop part of the project, working with dryland sorghum. It's a very definitive technique that allows us to say, OK, we put this nitrogen on here, this much was taken up by the crop, this much is retained in the soil. Where does that nitrogen move to after that phase? So it's a tool that, whilst very expensive, it's very definitive, and it lets us understand those processes that happen over time not just through a crop cycle, but over a crop rotation. And so what we're wanting to do here is progressively sample a metre of plot, um, probably tomorrow actually, uh, in another month or so we'll take another metre of plot, at maturity we'll take another metre of plot, and each time we're looking at how much fertiliser nitrogen has got into the crop and at the end of the season we'll say okay we can account for that nitrogen that's got into the crop, we can account for the nitrogen that's removed in grain, we can take soil samples and we'll account for how much fertiliser nitrogen is still in the soil. By difference we can get an estimate of how much nitrogen has been lost to the environment. What we're trying to do in this instance is account for every bit of fertiliser nitrogen that we've applied in these fields. We've had very little opportunity previously to, to have the investment with stable isotope at the enrichment rates we require to look at these longer term, you know, we have a three year project here, so the rates of 15N that we're able to deploy will give us that time frame subject to weather. The project isn't leaving it to chance to connect its data with the models that underpin decision tools. A significant component of the project is using the APSIM farming systems simulation model. It's a recognised world leader in this space, but we're focusing on the nitrogen routines in that model so that we can confidently predict in future for different farming systems, different soil types, what's going on in soil when they apply nitrogen fertiliser or alternatively when they grow a legume uh, and what's the fate of that nitrogen likely to be. It's about what's the confidence that I have in that APSIM uh, will represent the mechanisms that I'm seeing across um, southern and central Queensland grain production areas. What confidence can I have that that's going to be an accurate predictor of nitrogen dynamic through the cropping sequence. The benefit is that all those decision support tools that 
that industry or that agronomists and farmers are using to decide how much fertiliser they put on, when they should put it on, what form it should be, are going to be much more reliable. So people can actually make a, a confident decision um, about what to do with their fertiliser rates. They can also make a confident decision about things like when, when something unusual happens, like in the recent wet years, how should I respond? Um, am I likely to have lost all my nitrogen? And so if we can improve the ability of the models to make predictions that people can rely on, they can confidently use those tools to try and respond to whatever seasonal conditions come along.